I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Seth Perler with TFOS, the Executive Function Online Summit for Compassion and Proactive Parents, Teachers, Therapists, People Who Want to Help Kids with Executive Function Challenges. This is the site, executivefunctionsummit.com. Please share it with some people. Check out the speakers. Check out the All Access Pass. Check out the, the early bird sale. Check out all the things. And then today we're going to learn about Number five, 10 days to TIFOs. What the heck is 10 days to TIFOs? It means we've got TIFOs. we got the summer coming in 10 days, but it's less than 10 days because I've been doing a thing a day every day for 10 days. If I seem a little loopy, I am because I'm loopy. I have been using my executive function in my brain for a long time. And I'm excited for this weekend. August 5th, yo. We're going live. We're airing with uh, the first batch of 10 speakers. We got August 5th, 6th, 7th. Then we got Monday and Tuesday bonus days, 10 days of TIFOs. Today, I'm going to teach you about number five, number five, or number six. Oh, I put a five there, number six. Excuse me. Papers, paper management, folders, binders, things like that, okay? Managing papers. How the heck can a kid, elementary, middle school, high school, college, with executive function challenges, manage paper well? I have some ideas for you because I've done this for a long time. I've seen what works. I've seen what doesn't work. So I have some insights for you today on managing papers. And I do not like a lot of the traditional things. I will rant on that briefly today, uh, What I, why I have a problem with it and why it matters. And you can take that and do with you whatever you want with it. My intention, obviously, is to be of service to you. So um, I'm going to give you some suggestions instead. Now, paper management. We have, all right, did I mention share? Please share TIFOs with some people. If you like what we're doing, share that summit. All right, so we got this thing where we are trying to teach our kids how to manage papers, all right? And I know some of you are like, my kid doesn't have many papers. Look, you're gonna need some paper management system and you're not only going to need, you want your child to learn how to manage paper. I hate to say this because it can be so trite, but you do want them to be able to have know how to manage papers because they will have to have important files and folders no matter what career they do for the rest of their life they will have to have some semblance of some at least basic um, files and folder systems i probably have the most minimalist adulting system there is but i still have a small box where i have necessary files um, with really important things for example my parents will like that's an important thing I have to keep track of. A lease, you know, um, uh, car pay, car, anyhow, whatever. You get the point. They have to know how to manage papers. Now, there are four basic ways that kids manage papers. And you can, if there are more, go ahead in the comments and add more. But after years of doing this, there are four basic ways that most kids manage papers. Whether or not they have executive function challenges, here are the four basic ways. Number one, folders. Number two, three ring binders. Number three, accordion folders. And number four, the jam. So folders, simple folders, trapper keeper folders, whatever. You got your folders for different classes. Number two, you got three ring binders. All right, here's my, and this is where, where I'm going to rant. Here's my problem with three ring binders. For mo the vast majority of the students I've ever worked with, uh, elementary, middle school, high school, or college, Three ring binders don't work because I'm working with students who have executive function challenges. So listen carefully. When um, my students are forced to use three ring binders because the school or the teacher requires them to because they do binder checks or they just say you're required to have a three ring binder. Um, if the teacher or the school or somebody is helping them to manage that, cool. I have no problem with that. If they're not supporting them to do that and they expect them to have these skills. These are actually very complex skills. And for someone with executive function challenges, the tedious nature of managing papers in a three ring binder and putting them actually in the right place in a timely way when there's so many interesting things to do in life, that is a really tall order. And I do not recommend three ring binders for my kids, mainly for that reason. My kids who use them, use them because they're forced to, 
because they have to, because there's binder checks. I do not think it's appropriate to do a binder check and have a grade, excuse me for ranting, but don't excuse me for ranting. I'm frustrated by this because I've seen it so much, to be graded on a binder check. They're being graded on executive function rather than in the content of the class, the things they are learning, the effort they're putting into learning, okay? So I don't like that. I don't agree with that. I don't think that's morally right. I don't fault the teacher. I don't think the teachers mean to be doing this. I don't, I don't think they think about it, you know? I think they just think, oh, I want to help my kids be organized and blah, blah, blah. You know, that's just the way they've done it and, you know, they're just going to always do it that way. So whatever, that's just how it is sometimes. But um, I don't think it's right. Now, for my kids who do that, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll sort of collect all the stuff in the archive. If you saw my video yesterday on the archive, they can collect the stuff and deal with organizing it for the binder check later. If their executive function is doing pretty well and you can do it during the semester, fine. But I want my kids to be learning throughout the semester. I don't want them to be managing a bunch of papers in this sort of detailed way that is actually not necessarily serving them um, in terms of the grand scheme of things. Now, so um, you got your folders, you got your three ring binders, um, you have your accordion folders. Those are the ones that go in and out. Those can be effective for some of my kids. I don't use them often, but some of my kids, I can get them to work well. And then there's the jam, the jam, the jam. What's the jam? What do you think the jam is? The jam is when they jam it in the backpack or in the locker or in the desk, in the depths of the abyss of the backpack. There are crumpled up papers, or maybe they're even nice and they look organized, but they're not. They're just jammed in there. And the problem with that is that's not a system. That is not an effective system for them to be able to manage the paper. So our kids need a way to manage papers. And if you saw my archive one yesterday, why we can't manage what's not manageable. I want my students to manage what's manageable. I'm telling you, I've been doing this a long time. You can do whatever the heck you want. I don't really care, but I'm telling you what works and why, okay? So generally speaking, what has worked best for me, I've done, done this for many years is Believe it or not, simple folders. A lot of nuance to this. I'm not going to go into all the nuance, but the gist is this. Get a bunch of folders. Get duplicates because they're going to fall apart by November. If they're using them, they're going to fall apart. That's fine. Recycle them and get another one you, when you need it, but buy them proactively. Be ready at the beginning of the year and do a folder system. That's what works best. I'll tell you how I do that in a minute. The three ring binders, if they have to do it or if they like it, I have a small percentage who like to do it then we get them set up and we we organize that and then please look at the archive thing i posted yesterday though to know what to do because i don't want them having everything in there in the world um the accordions can work if it's done right and then the jam never works i mean so um all right so my preference i'm going to go on with my notes here my preference is the um the folder system and i'm going to tell you how i do that but if a student is that's even too much for them you have to be realistic with the kid if they're in fifth grade if they're in 12th grade i don't care just you know help figuring out where they're actually at if they don't know how to manage stuff it has to be easy and manageable so if that my preference is is the color-coded folder system and you want something even simpler i have had students where i just use the folding folders that don't even have pockets and I have had students where I give them one folder or two folders to put all their stuff in, and then we start learning the skills and then build from there. So there is a simpler way to do it. Now, I, you'll notice that I have the numbers five through 10 here. Um, and the reason I have the numbers five through 10 on this right here is because when the, the and, and this goes really through most of high school, when I'm really consistently doing SNOs, Sunday night overhauls, overhauling my kids' systems with them and helping them develop these skills, they really don't usually need any more than about five or 10 papers per class in the folder at any given time. I'm gonna say that again. Kids usually don't need any more than about five or 10 papers in any given folder at any given time because that's what's the current work. I want my students to successfully manage what can be managed. And that's what I tend to find is about that that many papers is what's really realistic when we're saying on top of it. It makes your life so much easier. They build the skills so much faster, believe it or not, when we're going slower like this. Now, number three, got to have buy-in. I think I've sp spoken up about that. So this isn't a top-down thing. Oh, I'm going to tell you how it's got to be. Oh, you got to have a three binder. Oh, you got to have the folder system. You, you got to get buy-in. You got to have them be a part of it and want to do it. Uh, subjects. Now, are you going to do a folder for each subject? 
whatever you choose, make it sane and thoughtful. So you might have a folder for math, science, uh, social studies, language arts, and then you might have a mixed one for, for specials or, you know, that mixes other classes or that's called miscellaneous or that's everything else. You might have a homework folder. You might not, you know, it depends on the kid, but just m use a group of folders that just think it through and get the buy-in and make a sane group of the folders. Um, next, Please label everything everywhere. I When I work with students, I wish I had one of my examples, but I, I use the Magnum Giant Sharpie and we'll write language arts, gigantic, their name, uh, gigantic, front and back. So let's say we chose the color yellow for language arts, run right on the front and back language arts, wrote their name on the front and back, upside down, backwards. You know, I just want things to be easy for my students and these are the students that lose things. So if their folder is on the hall, in the floor, on the floor in the hallway at school, and it's passing period, and nobody's name on it, it's going to get kicked all over the place, and it's going to be, you know, destroyed. Um, if their name is on it, it's at least less, more likely that somebody's going to pick up that folder and get it to a teacher and get it to that kid because their name's on it. And I, I was a teacher for a long time. It's very painful when kids lose stuff like that. So anyhow, labels, color coding. I think I mentioned that enough, but <clears throat> you know. It may, the more visual, the better, the easier it is for everybody. And then the um, archive and the SNO. So basically the archive is that, you know, I, I want my kids to be doing a regular SNO, a Sunday night overhaul, or a regular overhaul of their folder, folders and backpack. And when they do this regularly, you know, we take out papers, we recycle them, we throw things they need in the archive, and we keep the stuff in the folder that needs to be there. And again, as we're building this these skills and we're doing a regular overhaul and uh, archiving things regularly, it makes things so much easier. Anyhow, that's what I got for you. Again, I'm doing 10 days of TIFOs. These are things, strategies, to make school easier back to school for this fall. If you like what we're doing on TIFOs, please go ahead and snag that URL, uh, executivefunctionsummit.com, and share that with some people right now in some Facebook groups or something like that. Check out the All Access Pass all, sale if you want to. It's amazing. I tried to make the best thing in the whole wide world. Not literally. I mean, I tried to do an amazing job for you guys. Anyhow, I'm Loopy. I'm out of here. If you have any questions, thoughts, comments, pop them below. Share with us. What are your thoughts? And, uh, yeah. Let me see if I can figure out how to turn this thing off. Have a great day.